and clear your clutter inside and out. We're talking about the energy of your home. Do you know what the energy of your home is and what it's saying? How do the surrounding areas affect your home? What's the number one step you can take to improve the energy of your space? Learn how to clear your energetic home clutter as we continue our month focusing on hodgepodge. Do you control your clutter or does your clutter control you? On Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we'll teach you awareness as well as action steps to create change in your life. Come on, let's get started. Today's episode was inspired because my husband and I downsized this past spring. And although we downsized in the spring, we had been looking for a home last fall. We just, there was one my husband liked, but I was like, no way, not happening. We have to, we want to downsize and to one store and you're looking at a two story. Anyway, because I'd recently gone through this process and within a couple of days of moving to our new home, I could not get over how great I felt, the difference of the energy of the home, how much it was having such a positive impact on me. We back up to wetlands, I see nature every day. I didn't realize how much living at our other home was affecting me. And that was part of the reason that I wanted to have Amanda on today. And another part of that is I joked that when we moved from that neighborhood that I'd cleared my karma. That's when something's really frustrating me. I just kind of say to get me through it, okay, you've cleared up that karma. Let's move forward and, and be grateful. Whatever you did, you worked on yourself and you're out of that neighborhood. And the neighbors that we're, we're friends with, I, I kind of had a chuckle because the people that purchased our house are great friends apparently with the, uh, and they've been rude to the neighbors that we like, but I, I kind of laughed because I said, that tells me you're vibing on the same level as the next door neighbors that drove us crazy, which is great. So you won't be upset by trash or anything out else. So, I mean, that's a win-win in my book. And what's interesting is that the neighbors had shared with us because they'd been in the development for I think 30 years, close to when it was 25, 30 years since uh, it was built. And so their perspective on how the neighborhoods changed. And what I find fascinating is they are planning on moving next year. Some of the families, are, it's just like a, a change. Kind of like here, when we moved, we moved in, our next door neighbors moved in a month before we did. The people across the street moved in just a few months before we did and the other house on the other side, just within our little cul-de-sac had a lot of change in the neighborhood in general are having more sales. So it's just fascinating to me as with the shift of energy and as you change and, and what's going on about that. So that really, that was my motivation for having a man on. Amanda has a great laugh. She is just one of those wonderful laughs that you want to start cracking up when you hear it. She's a lot of fun. She has a lot of great energy. And I had been on her podcast and had such a good time on her show. And I think that the work that she is doing is so important that I wanted to have her on. Now, no, we need a little woo-woo. Energy of your home might be woo-woo right off the bat for some of you. We talk about the fifth dimension a little bit. And she recommends a book that's really basic. If that's a little out there for you, what I suggest is be open. Simply be open, hear the conversation, and maybe there'll be something that resonates with you. Might not be, but just to encourage you, just be open to it. If I were to sum up the fifth dimension, I would say, it's all about the love. It's all about the love, baby. So just wanted to throw that out there, but I hope that you really get a lot of value that. We had a great conversation when we had then talked about that. Let me tell you about today's guest. Amanda Gates is a professionally trained interior designer, advanced feng shui practitioner, podcaster, author, and award-winning blogger. She has seamlessly married interior design and feng shui for 20 years to help clients achieve spaces that feel as beautiful as they look. 
Her designs and educational blog have been featured in numerous publications, including USA Today, The Huffington Post, The Global Design Post, People Magazine, Nashville Home and Garden, Williamson Source, At Home Tennessee, Greater Nashville House and Home, the Brentwood Home Magazine, and recently Fox News Magazine. Since college, Amanda has furthered her education in feng shui and energy principles and continues to work under a grandmaster and shaman. Welcome, Amanda. Hey, hey, great to be here. So let's get started. I want you to talk about the energy of a home. Now, during the conversation, when I was on your podcast, I was downsizing, we were moving, I can't remember if we'd found our house yet, but having this process most recently, it's really gotten me into tune with the energy of a home. So let's get started. What's going on with the energy of our home? Yeah, so it's definitely something that you wanna take into consideration because I think that a lot of times people will look to external things you know, they'll read self-help books, they'll uh, hire a nutritionist or a fitness expert, they'll read a ton of self-help books, they'll get Reiki, they'll do all these external things, and then they come home and they're like, mm, something's not right. And I always tell people, it's kind of like you go out and you get calibrated and then you come home to, cal it's your, your energy at home is not calibrated. And so it's like magnets that don't, you know, really connect, they're opposing. And so, I think that what's so important to take into consideration when you're trying to improve an area of your life or improve your lifestyle in general, you have to look at your house as a possible solution. We tend to look at external things as the solution when we should be looking at our home as the first possible solution because it's where we entertain, it's where we cook our meals, and cooking is incredibly important because we're driving energy into the food that we consume. It's where our relationships, whether it's through our kids, our intimate relationships, friendships occur. It's where it's our most sacred spaces, right? It's where we have incredible conversations. It's where we have blow-ups. It's where we experience trauma, drama, incredible you know, experiences and incredible joy. It's, it's literally an incubator for everything that occurs in our life. And so if we don't look at that as the most important factor to improving our life, you're getting it all wrong. <laughs> so I did not realize until we downsized how unhappy I was at our other home. And I've, this is really why I want to do the interview because I was like, wow, within a day or two, I noticed a complete difference. Like it, it just because I think it had become... I've been living here, I'm living here daily. I had lost my perspective of how, I, I didn't, wasn't aware of how unhappy it was making me. So kind of with that, and when we were looking for a home, I wanna talk about does our home energy speak to us? Because when we were house shopping, we had done it last fall and I was like, no, 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 there weren't, we're like, my husband liked one house and I was like, absolutely not, not happening. So then when we did it in the spring, we both walked in, third house it's 333 we're like this is it we are both a thousand percent on the same page blah 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 so was the house talking to us or does our house or was our old house talking to that I mean I believe you have house spirit so I know that that might be strange for people but I definitely believe there's an entity like energy about the home so is our house talking to us and how can we listen absolutely actually that is why I got into feng shui 20 years ago, I was pre-med. I had gotten accepted to med school and I met a boy and he and I had purchased this home and it was the worst house, but in the best neighborhood. And we had stars in our eyes. We were so excited, but I mean, this house was terrible. It had been foreclosed on. California state law at the time was that if you were in foreclosure, if you put people in your home and rented your home, then the bank couldn't take it away. So he put homeless people in the house. They were urinating on the floors, they were tearing up the walls, they ripped out all the kitchen cabinets, they ripped up the toilets. I mean, they trashed this house. So we looked past all that and you know, at this point, I'm still pre-med and I thought, oh my God, we're gonna make this house beautiful, it's gonna be amazing. I know nothing about energy, I know nothing about feng shui. 
and I start having this weird experience where I'm falling apart, I'm hysterical, I'm crying. I finally, after six months, I go to the doctor and he's like, honey, you're having a panic attack. I had never heard of this term, mm -hmm. I had no idea what it was. And I kept getting a fever blister in the middle of my lip. And fast forward 20 years now, my home was speaking to me through my emotions. She was literally telling me we had our front door boarded up, which is why I couldn't breathe. And the front door was in the center of the home, which was why the center of my lip kept breaking out. So that was my first experience where I was like, oh my God, there's something to this. And, and what had opened this up for me is the house didn't feel right. I was experiencing this weird panic attack thing. I had fever blisters. So I went to Borders Bookstore and I thought if I could just make this house prettier, all of this is going to go away and it's going to be amazing. And I had this surreal experience where this woman walked over and she said, darling, you don't need those books. You need that book. And she pointed to this ominous F word. I couldn't pronounce it. I had no idea what it was, but I you know, opened up the first book. It was by Lillian too. And she was talking about the importance of the front door and how if you have no access to your front door, you're not going to be able to breathe. That's what I was experiencing. So that was kind of my aha. And since then, I can't tell you, I'm actually writing a book right now. And one of the chapters that I'm writing in now, I'm sharing the stories of all of the years where homes have spoken to me and the homeowners are like, wait, how did you know that? And I say to them, the house told me. And so, yes, people will think that you're crazy, but it's like, it's happened so many times now. And I've gotten so many downloads and so many information that's been true that I just trust it now. We have etheric bodies. Our homes are energy. We are energy. Everything is energy. And so we're constantly communicating with said energy. So you have to kind of let your guard down and just kind of, you know, sit into it and feel it. And you're a great example of that. You weren't jiving with your past home. Your energies weren't communicating. And now they are. It's like you went from being frenemies, you know, to best friends. <laughs> That's a good way to describe it. Now, I know a little bit about feng shui. So would, would you say when a home is talking to you, would that be what I would maybe call the collective energy? of all of the home, or do you consider it kind of like its own breathing entity, like a house spirit? I think it's both. I mean, it really depends on how old the home is and what it has seen. If it's seen a lot of trauma, which I later found out that my home, when I was learning about all this, had seen a lot of trauma. It had seen suicide, it had seen death, it had seen divorce, it had seen drug abuse. It had seen homeless people. And I think she saw me come in and was like, oh my God, you speak my language. I didn't know that, but it was such a great eye-opening experience to me to understand. I mean, you can communicate with nature. You can communicate with the energy in your home. You can communicate, you know, the best example is that when you go to a networking event or you go to a party, and you walk into the room and you get that gut feeling. That's your etheric body. That's your energy saying, get out. This is not good. There's something bad here. Or you meet that person and you just get the, I've never met this person before. And I just don't like the way I feel. That is your energies co-mingling. And it's simply information. It's just giving you information. And if you learn to trust your intuition and those feelings, whether it's coming from your house or a person, it's all energy communication. Oh, I love that. And that's a great example because I think most people can relate to that or like the expression, the air was so thick or the tension was so thick, you could cut it with a knife. That's the energy and that's the, what, you know, the tension that's going on. What would you say to people? Like how can they open up to listening to the energy of the house? Feelings. Feeling, I mean, you know, like the example I used a moment ago, we walked in and knew this was a house. Every other was like, no way, uh -uh, we didn't, couple didn't even want to walk in the door here. Yes, both on the same page. So if someone's yeah. buying or if they're like me and I wasn't aware enough to know at one level I was obviously, but another level, just how deeply I've been affected. 
private home. I think that a lot of people, we have been so bred and conditioned to be analytical. We've been so conditioned to always focus on our left brain way of thinking. And we've really shut down our right brain, which is the creative, imaginative, imaginative and feeling. It's the sensing side. And we've really shut that down. And you know, our school systems, it's all analytical. It's memorization. It's learning crap that doesn't matter. And the art programs and music programs and all these things are being cut out. And those are the things that we need because that inspiration is what really taps us into that intuition. And so when we talk about things like this, a doctor or someone who, you know, isn't in an analytical field will immediately say, I'm not intuitive. I'm not creative. I mean, if I had a dollar for every time I heard those two things, and the thing is, is that we all are, we all have the ability. It's just that we've shut it down and we've pushed it down and we've been shamed for it and blamed, you know, like, oh, you can't do that. And, you know, don't say that you're going to be, you know, ostracized and people are going to think you're weird. So I think that we have to kind of flip the script and get back into that way of thinking and, and say that it's okay that, you know, gosh, I got this really weird feeling when I walked into this house and it just doesn't feel right. We've all had that gut feeling. We get that lump in our throat. You have to stop long enough. You know, that's the other thing is we're so busy and chaotic and we get whipped up in a froth and it's like all of this information is there. But we're like that character from Charlie Brown, you know, Pigpen, where all that stuff is whirling around us. And so we feel those things. But because we're so stressed out, we're already, you know, we've got adrenal fatigue. We're constantly in fight or flight. The information is there, but it's getting commingled with everything else that's going on that we totally ignore it. It's just a matter of slowing down. And when you meet someone for the first time, I mean, you can even get this from an email. You know, there's energy in every single thing that we do. A text message, it's getting harder with, you know, email and text message because it, context gets lost. But the thing is, is that there's still energy there. And if you get a pit in your stomach, if you get a lump in your throat or something that isn't right, trust that. How many times do we ignore that feeling? We do it anyways. And we're like, I knew I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> it's so true. And I think especially with social media, that's what I used to practice reading energy. Like, let me just sit back and read and, oh, I'm trying to be nicey nice, the words might say, but the energy is the complete opposite of that. And you can just feel it. Yeah. Yeah. One thing when we talked last that I found fascinating about you, and you're the first person that I talked about this. So as I mentioned, I know a little bit about feng shui, but everything that I read or, or, or learned about focused on the house. And you talked about the surrounding. Like I was talking about selling a property and you're like, well, I would look at the backyard and, and the blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh my gosh, I had never, that had never occurred to me. And one of the big things that I noticed for us, so we had backed up to a busy road and, um, and there's gonna be a part B to this. And so we are now back up to wetlands. And we're on an acre every day. I see butterflies. I see little toads. I see dragonflies. I am surrounded by trees. We have a backyard that has a fence. The cats can go and hang out. But I didn't realize how, for me and for us, because my husband was the same way, we needed to be close to nature. And so I hadn't taken into account the surroundings of our home and how they affect the house. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so this is where, you know, I call myself an advanced feng shui practitioner and people are always like, well, I don't understand. What does that mean? Like, isn't feng shui feng shui? And I've been practicing for 20 years. And so people will be like, wait a minute. Like, and I still work under a grandmaster to this day. So people will get confused by hearing that and say, wait a minute. You look, you just figure out where to put your furniture and you move some clutter and you're shui. And it's like an onion. It's layer upon layer upon layer. And what I do has nothing to do with furniture or clutter. It's, you know, yeah, I mean, clutter is not great, but I always jokingly tell people I'm working in the fifth dimension. I'm looking at energy. So when we were just talking about this idea of how, you know, we're completely stressed out, you know, it's like hashtag hustling, never getting sleep, you know, working all the time. And it's like, it's become this badge of honor. 
But the thing is, is that we go from being in our house to being in our car to being in a cubicle, and then we just repeat the cycle. And so we're never outside. And the thing is, is that when you're looking at energy, which we can call feng shui, you have to take into account all of your surroundings. You have to take into account the land. You have to take into account the streets, the property line itself. What is surrounding the, you know, your, your property line? I just had a client two weeks ago that, you know, she's been living in her house for, I don't know, I think four months now. And she said she's had severe insomnia and she just feels like she's vibrating. Well, I was like, okay, you know, what's different? What have you changed? I was looking at her lot. I was looking at the house. And then I realized she had this entire, the, like the electrical thing for the entire city. It was like a full acre of all this electrical equipment that was going up the towers. I'm sure there's a fancy term for it, but it was all the generators basically that was powering up the city and it was in the property next door to her. Well, if we're talking about how we are energy and you have something like that next door, that's going to interrupt and disrupt your energy. So I told her, I said, let's do an experiment and go stay at someone else's house for a week and just see how you sleep. And she was fine. Mm -hmm. So you have to take into consideration all of the elements that are around you. And the thing is, is that we thrive when we're in nature because it's a part of our innate nature, right? We come from nature and nature has a spirit as well. It has energy. So you can go and spend 15, 20 minutes outside and you could be having the worst day, but as soon as you get outside nature, it fluffs your personal chi. So your chi can be completely dilapidated, have holes in it, be beat up from the day, and you go out and you absorb the chi from nature and it's gonna fluff you up. And if you get your feet in the grass, they've proven this where scientists have been able to see like energy fields around people and they're kind of icky and dark, black and gross. And then they put their feet on the grass and it's like their aura expands and turns to all of these brilliant, amazing colors. So it's, you know, this isn't a bunch of woo bullshit that we're like, oh, let's talk about auras. I mean, this has been scientifically proven and mystics and sages and seers have known this for thousands of years. And only now is science catching up and going, huh, I think they might be onto something here. And it's like nature is what feeds us. And the biggest problem with the anxiety and everything that's going on with us is that we've gotten further and further away from it. We now live in concrete jungles. And so I'm finding that more people like you are kind of subconsciously gravitating. That's probably why the home spoke to you because you're like, oh my God, this, the chi feels amazing. So it's not just the house. It's the energy of the property. It's the energy of the area surrounding it. It's the chi that comes from the roadways. And then anything that's around it, if the buildings around your property support that, then it's like you're rebuilding the onion to being whole. So that makes you feel good. When you prepare for death, you can live your life fully. Where's all that information to your online assets and would people know how to find it? What do you want people to remember about you? If you were to die suddenly, who would take care of your pets? Julie Caraccio can support you in end of life planning and organization. Visit reawakenyourbrilliance.com to learn more. So what would you say, you have the great example of your friend that had like what I'd call electrical grid for lack of a better word. And so, so far we're, the one other thing that's really nice is because the neighbors at our last place, the next door neighbors were horrible. And I'd put up gold light, I'd try all these things, you know, do with within my control. And so unfortunately we're gonna have someone next to us build, but the good news is they like trees. And so they're keep, we'll have a nice tree line and we have a decent one now and I'll plant that, but I can't control what other people do. And so if you have an electrical grid or you have neighbors that are kind of maybe not on the same wavelength, what are things you can plant trees? I mean, how can you, cause you can't control that energy. So what can you do, I guess, maybe to enhance your area? Like your friend with the electrical grid or if her neighbors were cranky neighbors and that kept her up all night, like what would you say to someone? 
Yeah, a lot of it depends on personal chi. So if you've got really strong chi, then that's going to benefit you greatly. And that is so important because not everybody lives on an acre. Some people live in an apartment. If you live in a condo or an apartment, you've got people above you, below you, around you. You know, how do you control that? So it's really about cultivating your own chi. I have a ton of information about this on my blog and my podcast where I teach people about what that means, why it's important. The stronger that you can make your personal chi, and all of ours, most of society has no chi. <laughs> it's totally dilapidated, right? Like mm -hmm. from the hustling and the lack of sleep and the being stressed all the time and the go, go, go. It's like, your chi should be out here and fluffy and most people's are completely collapsed on them. So you take a person where their chi is collapsed and they've got an electrical tower or um, a funeral home that's next door. You know, I had one gal here in Nashville. She, she was surrounded by six churches. And the thing is, is that in feng shui churches, funeral homes, you know, things of that nature are considered very yin. It's a very soft, quiet energy. And she was a single female, which is considered a soft, you know, energy, quiet energy. So that's going to affect you. That's why you have to look at the surroundings. So you have to cultivate your tree, chi, strengthen your chi. You can do things like meditate, drink, you know, really fresh, healthy, alkaline water eat good organic foods, get outside of nature, get near moving water. Once you can strengthen your chi and get yourself powered up, then you can power up your home. If you've got the advantage of having a garden or a yard, you can plant trees and, and plant your own garden and basically put up an energy field around you. If you're in an apartment or a condo, you can put up an energy field around you and fill that up with positive energy, but you can't do that until you focus on your chi first. Everybody makes the mistake where they're like, oh, I read this thing on the internet. I'm just going to sage the house and I'm going to be good. Mm -hmm. There are so many ingredients that get skipped or missed over and they've been, you know, deleted. And it's like, you've got to work on yourself first and get your chi strong and then work outside that onion. Let me ask a question because this might, uh, people might understand this if I say it in a different way. Would it be similar to say, I love fluffing your chi? That's like my new favorite expression. I'm going to be like, I'm fluffing my chi. So if I'm really, my aura is clean and clear and strong, and I'm sharing my light with the world because I'm just in that love fifth dimension type of thing, is it kind of like that? And so that people who aren't in that space just will go away? Is that a, another way to say it? Yeah, I got, speaking of my YouTube channel, I have a great YouTube video that I share. You know, what happens if you work in corporate America and you're trying to vibe high and, you know, you're doing the work, you're meditating, you're doing all these things, but you're surrounded by people who gossip and, you know, want to talk politics and are nasty. What do you do? Well, you continue to cultivate your chi because as you elevate, you get further and further away from a vibrational match from them. And so I see this all the time where if you start working on yourself and then, you know, once you get strong, you work on your house, suddenly the neighbor moves or suddenly that power plant has to be shut down because it's 30 years old and they need to update the technology. I've seen some strange stuff happen where you're like, I, I, and that's actually why I made the YouTube video. I had a gal come to me and she worked in corporate America in a cubicle. And on the weekend, she said, I would be at home and I would have this amazing sacred space and I would be vibing high. And she's like, I'm floating in fifth dimension. And then I go out into the world and I, I feel like I'm falling to two, to the, you know, second dimension because people are gossiping and they're telling me about their weekends and, and their unsavory behavior. And she's like, I just, I want to get out of it, but I need the money. So we worked on her chi and we worked on her house and we worked on getting all of her feng shui right. And she ended up getting promoted. So she left that entire environment and she went to an even better one where everybody was at the same level she was. So those are the kinds of things that happen. If you sink into what I call below the cross, which is anger, frustration, disappointment, shame, guilt, all those icky emotions, what happens is, is you perpetually 
stay there. You can't get out of the, the froth of it. Then you surround yourself with those same people and you all together are just going to sit there and talk about it. And you're going to, you know, kind of churn and burn in that same stuff. You have to step out of that and focus on different things and not get sucked into that and go into what I call above the cross, which is peace, compassion, kindness, and love. When you get here, all that other stuff falls away. It just goes away. So you have to experience it, believe it, but it, all, it happens all the time. Well, I want to share a story because this popped in my head and I forgot this because this was years ago. I was living in Los Angeles and I w had a boss and I later learned they had hired me to write grants. And he, I mean, I'd almost be in tears every day because he would rip apart everything I wrote. And I'm thinking, what am I doing here? Well, I later learned they hired me so he could go out and raise money. Well, he didn't want to go deal with people. Well, in your fundraising, that's what you do. So he would want to spend all his time correcting me so he could avoid what his thing. So anyway, all the stuff, all the stuff. And then finally, I was doing uh, a lot of personal growth work. I was taking classes, energy healing, all that good stuff. And then I, it didn't bother me. And I thought, whatever, he's going to, I have no control over him, so I make my day. And, and my friend, my best friend had, had just emailed me the day before and we were talking about, it. I said, you know, it is what it is. True story. The next day he announced he was leaving. Yeah. You surrender. And, and it's because I changed my energy. So thank you for reminding me of that. I needed to hear that. I love the idea about the garden and kind of creating a space. What would you say to people in their home? Now I'm going to say decluttering. I know that you're more into the, to the bigger and better things, but I'm, this is what we're all about, clearing the clutter here. So what other suggestions would you have for people? How can they strengthen the energy of their home? I love the fluffing of the chi personally, but how can it, is it fluffing? Can we say fluffing the chi for the home or would there be a different term that you'd use? Hey, whatever works, whatever gets your ass off the couch and gets you to work. <laughs> well, first and foremost, you have to cultivate your chi. Like I said, that's the number one thing that everybody skips. They're dilapidated, they're worn out, they have holes in their aura, they feel like crap, and then they try to go and do powerful wielding of energy, and they're like, this woo stuff doesn't work. Well, yeah, you're shooting blanks. You got to strengthen your chi. Once you've done that and worked on yourself and fluffed your chi, and you'll know, you'll feel rested, you'll feel positive, you'll, that favorite song of yours will come on and you'll start dancing like, that is fluffed chi. Now what you can start doing is I always tell people to focus on the top five disruptors. This doesn't really have anything to do with clutter, but the top five disruptors are how you can immediately start shifting energy in your home. And it's free. It's so easy to do. So the first thing is you want to look at your front door. A lot of people don't use their front door. They use the back door, the side door, the garage door, but they never use their front door. That's the mouth of chi. So we were talking about before at the top of the show, I was living in this house and experiencing this thing called panic attacks and the, you know, the lip thing. My front door was boarded up. So this is where all energy comes into your home and really touches all the major points in your life. And so if you're not using it, you basically have your mouth wired shut. If you've got your mouth wired shut, you're emaciated. You're, you're not getting real nutrition. So wipe down your front door, open it at least once a week, get that good, delicious chi coming in your house. You know, if your hardware is dilapidated, I would suggest wiping it up. If, you know, if it's really bad and chipped, I would suggest replacing it at some point. If you can't afford that right now, clean it up to the best of your ability, but just make it as clean as possible. Get rid of the cobwebs, broken light bulbs, all of that. That's a key thing because that's where all good energy comes in. Pay attention to where your bathrooms are. Bathrooms are drains. Where does the energy go? It goes down. That's where the water goes. So the average bathroom has five drains in it, four to five. So that can really be a, a pretty big suck on your energy. And depending on where that's located in your home, it could affect your career, your health, your finances. So that's something where I always tell people, just shut the door. And if you, you know, if you do happen to have like an over the door mirror, put a mirror on it because that helps slow the energy down so that it's not getting so severely drained. You also want to look at the overall shape of your home. The ideal shape of a home would be square or rectangular. I have seen some round homes. <laughs> Obviously, this is a good one. 
you know, because what happens is, is if you've got an irregular shape or an odd shape, it could be that you have a missing piece or a missing area. And so that could be something that shows up in your life. I don't want to get into it today because it'll take a lot, but you can go over to my YouTube channel. It's this is coming from the Bagua map. It's basically a grid that we stick over our homes. And so let's say your home is not a box and it's, it's an L shape. You could be missing partnership or wealth or, you know, uh, reputation. And, and so those are likely things that are showing up in your life and you don't know why. The other thing is, is that you want to look at the idea of what's called command position. Command position is when you're at your bed, desk, or stove that you can always see the door. And the reason that this is so important is because people are so stressed out anyways, and when you can't see the door, you don't realize it, but you're in fight or flight mode. You're fired, your adrenals are fired up, your liver is fired up, your parasympathetic nervous system is on high alert because it's evolution. You know, back in the day, we would get bitten by a tiger if we had our back to the cave. So we want to get really good rest. We want to be able to see who's coming at us at the office. And when we're cooking, if you, if you don't know what's going on behind you, you're driving that subconsciously, driving that frenetic energy into your food, feeding it to your family, and it spreads throughout. And then all of a sudden people are bicker, bickering and there's anxiety and you don't know what happened. And it's like, could have just been, you know. So in that situation, if you're not facing the door, just fix it with a mirror. Most people have a mirror somewhere around the house. You just want to be able to have the reflection so that you can see what's coming at you. Because if you can't, it's going to cause health issues, anxiety issues. It's going to put you on high alert. And it's also going to make you jumpy. <laughs> so it's going to add to, you know, if you've got ADHD or anxiety or suffering, any of those things, it's going to add to that and, and make it harder for you. Knife edges. The concept of a knife edge is if you've got a, a wall, kind of like a hallway like that, where you come up the hallway and then you go down, or basically this edge is what creates a knife edge. A knife edge can, again, cause anxiety because it's what causes sharp shooting chi. So let's say I'm sitting here in my office and I've got a knife edge here. It's like all day I'm getting hit. I'm getting stabbed in the back. So I hear that a lot. I'll, I'll work with someone who's at an office and, and they're like, you know, I just feel like I'm constantly getting gossiped behind my back. I'm getting stabbed in the back. And as soon as I hear those words, I know exactly what's going on. So you want to look at that in your office. You want to look at that at the bed as well, because when you're sleeping at night, if you've got sharp shooting chi hitting a leg, going across the midline or something, you're probably going to have health issues, restless leg syndrome. You're not going to be able to sleep. And also when you're cooking, because you're driving that energy into your food. So I always tell people to start with those top five, easy to do, free for the most part. And it's something that you can do immediately to start shifting the energy. Definitely makes sense because as you're talking, I'm like, okay, we're pretty clear on most of that off to check a thing or two, but in my previous house, I'm like, oh my gosh. And this may, would make sense because part of me like, I'm losing my mind. Why am I losing my mind? Because I think that all this stuff's going on, but now I understand how that contributed. Can you just briefly, because you mentioned it a couple times, talk about the fifth dimension? Because so for people who are listening, might not have heard it or understood it, understand what it means. Yeah, so this process has been going on for a while. Our planet, this is actually not the first time that we've been in uh, the fifth dimension. If People have heard about Atlantis or the Lemurians, Easter Island. Um, the problem is, is that mass consciousness has continued to drop. And so we've been currently in 3D, but right around, I would say, 2003, 2004, we started to very delicately start the shift, and then it hit pretty hard in 2012. That's why there was so much mania <laughs> around 2012. But it's nothing to fear. Basically what it is is that the vibration is just simply changing and you'll start hearing terms called the new earth. We're not going to a new planet. We're not like <laughs> floating away to alien nations. Um, it's just simply uh, mass consciousness is starting to rise. And this has been scientifically proven too. Back in 1910, I can't remember the scientist's name, but 
he did a he was a statistician and a mathematician and what he did is he brought an ox to a fairground and he had people guess the weight of the ox well nobody got the the weight of the ox right but all of the answers were within one percent of each other that's mass consciousness so it's a great example of where people are at and unfortunately 78% of consciousness is what I would call below the cross. You know, they're, they're getting caught up in the hustle. They're getting caught up with politics and all that below the cross stuff, which lowers the vibe. So what's happening is, is that a lot of people are starting to wake up. Weird phenomenon, as they would consider it, is happening. They may experience nature in a new way. They may hear something or see something that is unusual to them. And lots and lots of people are going through this right now. And it's basically just a shift in consciousness and a shift in vibrational energy. So we're skipping over the fourth dimension because fourth dimension is just time and time does not exist. So that's why it's skipping. But there's a lot of great books. If people are interested in this, there's one, I think her name is Mary St. Ger I know the last name is St. Germain. Uh, but it's called Waking Up in 5D, and it's fantastic. It's just an everyday guide on what this looks like, what it means, and it just, things are in the fifth dimension. It's just kindness, compassion, oneness. It's really a world that we can't imagine, but the reason why things are so chaotic right now is it's like the buildup, right? It's It's the volcano that's been kind of stewing and it's about to to explode so to speak but we have to have that for contrast and and so i think what it's making people do is just really realize what's important to them and what's not and so a lot of people are experiencing friendships that are just kind of going away or, or relationships that are just kind of going away and things that used to be important to you don't matter anymore. And the things that you never thought you would be doing, like showing kindness to a stranger or, you know, I can't kill anything because I can feel their consciousness. If somebody cuts down a tree, I weep because I feel the consciousness of the trees. So that's fifth dimension. It's just this level of oneness where we have a greater understanding that we truly are all one. We're not these meat suits that we think that we are. You know, we are a, a one and we come from a, a spiritual realm of energy. And so right now, feng shui is more important than it's ever been. I actually just uh, did a video called Fifth Dimension and Feng Shui. And the thing is, is that uh, we talked about it at the top of the show. If you're going out and doing all these external things and you're not getting your environment right, you're, it's going to keep you tethered back. And I just had a regression therapy session done uh, by the famous Alba Weinman in Miami. And I learned in that session that the whole purpose of this lifetime for me is to teach people how to create valuable energy within their homes so that they can rise to the fifth dimension. So I was able to have a greater understanding that like those top five disruptors that we just talked about is that if your energy is irritated. So for me, example, I'm having panic attacks and I have a, a thing growing on my lip. Do you think I'm frustrated? Do you think I'm disappointed? Do you think I feel happy about life? When you feel like that, it's hard to raise your vibration. When you have a knife edge coming at you, you're agitated. Um, if you're constantly being startled, you know, it's, it's increasing your heart rate. It's putting stress on you. If you're not using your front door, you're not getting vital energy. So it's preventing you from being able to cultivate your chi and also the environmental chi that surrounds you. So that's why feng shui is so key. Not all the material crap that we've been led to believe, like we got to have the car and the house and the clothes and become a Kardashian. It's about creating valuable energy and connection with other people and having compassion and kindness. That's the most important thing. That's the most important task of the day. I think the one example I would share how we've raised our mass consciousness is Marianne Williamson being on the stage of presidential candidates. Now, 20 years ago, A, that would have never happened. And I think people are listening to her. Now, some are mocking her and you know, you'll see the things on the late night show, but 
we couldn't have had her 20 years ago. So to me, that's the best representation that I can see someone talking about love, someone talking about things like that at a national level and in a, in a arena where it just isn't. Well, and that's the rise of the divine feminine, right? Like we've had such this strong patriarchal system for so long and we are in the shit because of the patriarchal system. I'm sorry, but men have great qualities, but <laughs> you know, there has to be a quality to create the perfect yin yang, right? We have to have the, the balance and it's been extremely yang for an extremely long, 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 long time. <laughs> I think that she has a real chance for winning. And I think that our consciousness is ready for somebody who gets it and can really balance out what our culture and what America needs. We need more heart. We need more compassion. We, mean, we need so much more understanding. And you know, all of this stuff where it keeps coming out where, you know, this man has done this to this child and, you know, this molestation and this trafficking and, you know, all, all of the bad behavior that men have done, you know, I think it's all coming to the surface to help us all wake up and say, okay, we need to stop this train. We need to stop what we keep saying yes to and turn things around. And she's that answer. Well said, well said. So kind of to wrap it up, can you just suggest, I like to have take actions, like you mentioned earlier, whatever it takes to get you off the couch. So what would you say to people listening and watching? Like, what are some take actions you want to, whatever you feel led to share? Without a doubt, the top five disruptors, which we talked about earlier in the show. And, you know, if you're, the thing is, is that when we're talking about personal chi, we have an elemental makeup. So you know, if you're, I'm a wood personality. And so what that means is that I do things at a high rate of speed. I have piles of stuff everywhere. Thank God you can't see my desk. And I love big ideas. I'm constantly shifting gears and it's like, Ooh, this and Ooh, this and Ooh, this, and that's a wood. And we love to expand and do big things. But in earth, on the other hand, they're earth. They're very stable. They like to do things one thing at a time. So when I hear a list like the top five disruptors, I'm like, I need to do everything right now and I need to do it simultaneously. While an earth is going to be like, oh my God, five? I can't do five. So for the earth element, I would say focus on the front door. The front door is by far the most important thing. Clean your front door, wipe it down, get rid of cobwebs. If it needs a fresh coat of paint, put up a, a new coat of paint. Clean up the hardware to the best of your ability. Make sure that the door is not sticking. That's another big one. You may find yourself saying like, ah, oh, I keep getting tripped up or I, I, don't, I can't find the words. If your door is sticking, that's going to help with that. Um, make sure light bulbs are working around the door and that you have a clear path up to your front door. So, I mean, that's a really easy, tangible tip that everybody can take away today and say, okay, I don't remember anything else that she said, but she told me to work on my front door. Clean it up, put fresh light bulbs out there, get the cobs, cobwebs off, clean up around it, make sure it opens, you know, properly and doesn't stick. And, you know, I think the other thing is too, is just, simply opening it, right? Like a lot of people don't even open their front doors. Just take a moment and open up your front door for like 10 seconds and literally hold the intention and I'm calling in nature and I'm calling in all that good vital chi to literally sprinkle pixie dust on every aspect of my life. You know, like anything that you can do and, and have fun with it, you know, really enjoy it. I think that a lot of people get um, so worked up when they hear the word feng shui, like, oh, it's so confusing and I, I don't know what I'm doing. And this article said this, but this said something, you know, completely different. And there's a lot of contradictory stories that are out there. And I think that don't overthink, don't get yourself freaked out. It's not that complicated intention and just going into it with pure joy is the most important thing. So for the earths that are out there, don't panic. <laughs> Fantastic. That's great. And that's something like you said, everyone can do. Now tell people where they can reach you, learn more about you, your podcast, whatever you'd like to share. 
Yeah, so if you're new to feng shui, I would definitely recommend going to my YouTube channel. You can just type in Amanda Gates, and I think it's called Amanda Gates Feng Shui, so that pops up. I have over 100 tutorials on there on everything from the top five disruptors to the Bagua map. I have a great video on above and below the cross emotions. So just all kinds of quick tips to really help you start getting the energy right in your own space. The podcast, which is Home Energy Design, that's on iTunes and Stitcher. It's me doing tutorials, but it's also me having great guests like Julian. I've had um, everything from energy healers to uh, Reiki masters, astrologers, all the woo you could possibly imagine I've had on there. Um, so those are two great places with a plethora. I've had the podcast for almost 10 years and the YouTube channel has been up for, I think, four years. So a plethora of very valuable information to really, you know, get ready for this whole fifth dimensional stuff and getting valuable energy around you. Um, and then my website, which is gatesinteriordesign.com. If you're interested in working with me, you can go there and just shoot us an email or fill out the form and Deborah will get in touch with you. Thank you so much, Amanda, for joining me. Thanks so much. Bye, everyone. On our next episode, we're talking about being penny wise and pound foolish. Go out, clear your clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. When you clear your clutter, you can share your gifts with the world. Sign up for our free newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. If you've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, please rate, review, and share us.